as we serve Jesus and we look forward, we have faith. And that's what I'm going to be talking about this morning, faith. Now, throughout the year, I've not really touched on this, to be honest, maybe you know, as a full sermon, but I'm not going to go into everything to do with faith, but I am going to be touching on a few things. Right. And so we have two scriptures for our text in the same chapter, the chapter of faith itself, Hebrews 11. Many of us will know that very chapter. But the writer starts off with this. Faith, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Let me read that again. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. I will look at that later on. And then verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Father, we come before you. We so thank you for your grace. We thank you that we are able even to see today, Lord. We thank you for you. You've led us and guided us and protected us and watched over us throughout the whole year, Lord. We are coming to the end of this year as we begin to go closer to the new year. We thank you, God. We give this time to you, Lord, that we would begin to build up that faith that you that you know that you have instilled in us, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray that every doubt will be removed, every unbelief, Lord, will be cast aside. Lord, that we will keep on and keep on trusting and believing in you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace upon our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, life is full of ups and downs. And just like life is full of ups and downs, we cannot afford to allow the downs of life to get us in a negative and pessimistic way. You know, there are people that are always negative and pessimistic. And when they're negative and pessimistic, they can never get anywhere in life. Because when you look at the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, you find all there are so many acts of faith. Yeah. Are you with me? Amen. There were, you could say facets of faith, but there are acts of faith all throughout the Bible and we don't have the time to mention every one of them. But there are acts of faith throughout the Bible yeah. And uh, God makes us understand. You know, we know God is love. Yeah. You know, the, uh, Paul is one that mentioned this about the three things uh, that are very important. Uh, and, and love is one of them, hope, uh, but also faith. Yeah. And so faith is so important uh, that the writer here talks about how important it is. We cannot... I uh, live our lives, uh, certainly as believers, uh, without having to understand how crucial faith is. I've entitled this message, uh, Faith, the Unstoppable Force, and it is an unstoppable force. Yes, it is an unstoppable force because of the power, and maybe we can even bring a bit of physics, the energy that faith has. and. There is no scientist that can be able to uh, uh, quantify the, 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 the very uh, power or weight uh, or the force that faith has. Because it is, it is the very thing uh, that drives everything that we do as a believer. Oh, yes, yes, faith yes. is important. So think with me. Our scripture says, faith as we know, is the substance, 
substance of the things we hope for. There are things that we hope for, so we hope for those things, but the substance is the faith. It is the unseen element. And it's the evidence of things, the Bible says, in the scripture, very quickly, is the evidence of, of things that, uh, that are not seen. But the evidence, we haven't seen it yet. But we have the evidence. The world will say, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't even, how do you, how can you believe what you haven't seen? Yeah. But the substance and the evidence. Amen? Amen. Amen? You know, when you go to court, Many of us, if you've been to court before, you see in a case, they would, uh, in order to the judge to assess, to see who is guilty or not, they need witnesses, witnesses that saw. They, uh, they have evidence. They saw it with their own eyes. They can give descriptions of exactly what happened, uh, who is telling the truth and who's not. And perhaps if there are no witnesses, maybe there's a CCTV footage that's brought into the courtroom that is shown. Now, that's an evidence because now we have something recorded. We don't have a human being that can actually lie and favor uh, the, uh, who knows, the plaintiff. Or, 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 but we have a video evidence. And that video evidence shows clearly what has happened. That there is a clear evidence it cannot be disputed because it's on video yeah. it's recorded it is the evidence as a matter of fact it is the substance for that very case are you with me yeah, yeah. so the bible is saying us in in as we serve god in christianity faith is that evidence is that substance the world doesn't understand that they're like you guys you you guys are actually crazy you know how can you just believe like that? Oh yeah, I believe, but I haven't seen it. How do I believe it? Well, have you seen Jesus before? Have you actually touched him? Do you know if he really lived? And people will go on that way, but man, we know what God has done in our lives. We know we can, we are, you know, we are there to testify. We share and we say, we know what God has done. See, everyone that is saved today, is a witness. Yeah. You're a witness to what? To the power of salvation. Yeah. Because you have, that's why yeah, the scripture says, taste and see. see. See, you have to taste first before you see. The world says, no, I want to see first, then I'll, I can I can then taste. Yeah. No, no, no. Taste and see. So when you come to Jesus and you experience salvation, now, now you, I know it's by faith that you do that, uh, but then you can be a witness to those I don't know and say, hey, by the way, I have tasted and seen it, but the, I know that the Lord is good. Why don't you come and taste? Yeah. That's our faith in action. And so what I want to do today, I want to look at five, now probably many, but I just want to explore five areas that can define faith. Maybe one of them, from a God standpoint, perhaps the other of them is from a human standpoint. So one is definitely going to be from a God standpoint, and the rest of them are from human standpoint. And so I have not had a scripture on the screen, and you might want to open to this scripture. The first one is what I call the unashamed faith. Matthew twenty. In Matthew chapter 20, the Bible tells us, and again, you can read from verse 29, it says, And as they uh, went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him, uh, and behold, two blind men, this is Matthew 20, verse 29, uh, two blind men sitting by the roadside, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Uh, then the multitude warned them that they should uh, be quiet, but he cried out, all the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. And Jesus stood uh, still and called on them and said, uh, What do you want me to do for you? And they uh, said to him, Lord, that our eyes be opened. And so Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. 
Check out what happened in the scripture here. The Bible said Jesus and the people who were following him, they are on the way out of Jericho. And as they were journeying, uh, there were two blind men. These two blind men, uh, they did not care how people saw them. Are you with me? They, oh, they heard Jesus. Uh, I, I, I mean, just to kind of get the picture of what it is to be blind. It's very hard for any of us to even comprehend it. But maybe you might try and close your eyes and walk around your room for a few minutes and see how you cope with that. It is not a joke. Our, our eyesight is so crucial. These men, I don't know if they were born blind or they had a situation where they became blind, but regardless, they were blind. They needed healing. They heard that Jesus was passing by. And wherever Jesus was, there is a multitude of people. Hundreds, if not thousands of, of people. And the men are crying out, Oh Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us, Son of David. That the multitude got angry and tried to warn them, if you guys make noise again, we're going to beat you up. And the Bible said they cried out the more. They were not ashamed. Are you with me? They were not ashamed. It was an unashamed faith that they had. They did not care what people said, what the multitude thought. All they were concerned about is they wanted Jesus to hear them. You see, Jesus actually knew they were there. He's a king of kings and lord of lords. He knows everything. Amen. He knew they were there, but they had to cry out to God. They made noise to try and get past the multitude. Have you ever been in a situation where you're not even concerned about how you look? You're not concerned about what people think. You're not concerned about uh, the situations you know, around you. You know, someone sent me a, 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 some a little, some little picture uh, full of words, and they were talking about nine mistakes that people make, and they were talking about people waste time thinking about what other people think. They waste time trying to please other people, and perhaps that's you. It might be hard to really have this unashamed faith. I don't care what people think. I'm going to church and I'm going to carry my Bible and it's this big. <laughs> people are so concerned what others think about them. These men were not concerned. They were blind and they didn't care. Let the multitude warn them. They warn them, be quiet. And they cried out more. And they got their healing. Yeah. They got their healing. You know, I was speaking to someone and I was uh, uh, talking about last year when my wife and I, you know, tried to get a property and we were we wanted a property hunt. I previously helped my brother and it was smooth sailing. Really, no one even went for it. My brother went, and we just went in and did it, and it's literally five minutes. Saw the property, he liked it, and that's it. Bought it, and it was smooth sailing. Fast forward years after, my wife and I are looking for property now with family grown, you know, everyone's squeezing in the room. We need to get something that is suitable for us. And we go out on property hunt, and I am stunned and shocked. I'm like, Birmingham? Birmingham is now becoming mini London. I mean, people were going, there was, you know, property, go and view one property. We've got 30 people, 40 people viewing the same property. I'm like, man, this is serious. They're coming from London. I'm like, man, people are putting cash down. I don't have cash to put down. <laughs> so we view this one property. Man, I like the property. He had everything. The area wasn't that great, but I'm willing to, you know, make do with it. We wanted the property so bad. We were, we were chasing after the property. And at the end, the lady that got the property. Now, just to see how this tallies what I'm saying. We all wanted it. There were people that were putting that bid in. And we kind of went a bit more like, okay, we can only afford this amount. 
and they were in touch with us. Yes, yes, you guys really want it, yeah, we want it. So at the end, the owner decided to sell to someone else that wasn't us. So we were disappointed. That day, we were actually miserable. <laughs> so I said, okay, Lord, Lord, you know what you're doing. But then, a day after, the person, the, the landlord was gonna, or the owner was gonna sell to, the, the, the owner changed his mind. Why did this change his mind? Because this woman came, knocked on his door. She was on her knees begging and crying. She is, God, I want this property badly. Please sell it to me. She is in tears. And the man called the estate agent and changed the whole thing and sold it to her. I was vexed. I'm like, man, come on. Are you crying? And I, I, I took some time and thought. I was like, yeah, you know what? She was willing to make herself look silly. She had faith, unashamed. I'm going to make myself look silly. I'm going to go on my knees. I'm going to cry, even though I'm going to spend money. I wonder if some of you even do that. You're like, not me. Because I was thinking, I can never do that. What's she doing? That's manipulative. Well, she got what she wanted. That's the point. Are you with me? She went the extreme where others won't go, and she got what she wanted. There were many blind people in Israel, but these two men went the extreme. Who knows? Probably there were even blind people amongst the crowd that were being led by other people, but they weren't willing to cry out and make themselves look like they are. Uh, uh, you know, people are going to look at them and tell them to shut up. But the second type of faith is the persistent faith. This is the one that we see a lot more in the New Testament. The persistent faith, there are many uh, scriptures that talk about this, but I'm just going to mention two of them. Many of us know the story in Luke 18. I won't take the time to read it. But the, Jesus actually brought this story about a judge, uh, talked about this judge was a, an atheist does not even believe in God. He's an atheist. He's a judge. But there was a woman, this widow, that had a case. Someone had done her wrong, and uh, back in those days, you needed money. If you were not rich, just like some cultures, you're not going to get any, you won't get anywhere because you don't have money. You need money to have the right people to fight your case. So this woman, of course, she didn't have money. She's thinking, I know this judge, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't fear God, but I know he's good at his job. So she goes to him. She's trying everything, but the judge is not even listening. And the scripture tells us that because, the, listen to what the judge said. The judge said, it says, but he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Are you with me? By her con she is persistent. She's continually coming. Now, Jesus wasn't saying this, that God gets weary when we come to him. Come on. Amen. Amen. Jesus was using an earthly illustration to just show us how we should be. Yes. That here is a, a, first of all, you can't compare this atheist to God. On, God is a just God, amen? Yes. Uh, but you have an atheist that doesn't believe God, uh, that doesn't have no regard for man, he just is doing his job. He doesn't care if you bring money, he will throw you to one side. As a matter of fact, that gets him angry. And the woman saw that and said, yeah, you know what? I might believe God, but I know I need to, I need to, you know there are people you need in life that are not, they don't have to be godly people. But there are people that you know, okay, God help me that this person would help my case. This person will work on my behalf, even though they don't believe in God. She was willing to be persistent. That's persistent faith. She believed that if I was persistent and I just kept on going, after a while, this man would just have to give in and take on my case. And so it was. Persistent faith. I'm saying this for a reason because God is trying to teach us something. 
Jesus gave another illustration in Luke 11 about a man who had a friend. And at midnight, he's in his bed with his, his children, and he had another friend that came and knocked on his door that came from a long journey. This friend came from a long journey, and the custom was back then, uh, uh, just like the other customs too, I know in England, people might say, hey, hold on, hold on, you should call me first before you come. How dare you knock on my door when I'm asleep with my children? But a custom then is, hey, a friend is on a long journey, they knock on your door, they come in, you have to provide food for them. But it's midnight, he didn't really have any food, so he ran quickly to his friend, you know, maybe next door, I don't know how many doors it was, but he got there and said, hey, bro, can you give me some food because I've got a friend that came on a long journey and he's here and I need to look after him, I don't have any food. And so the guy's like, hey, you know, bro, I can't do anything, I'm in, I'm in bed, my, the wife is in the bed, the children are in the bed, I can't do that. But because the person was persistent, again, this is what Jesus said. Let me read it to you very quickly. And so he answered him and said with him, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are uh, with me in bed. I cannot rise and give, uh, and give to you. I say to you, though, he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Yes. Here are the words of Jesus. I'm not reading the words of the disciples. The words of Jesus. Jesus is saying uh, there is a need to be persistent. Persistent faith is essential. You have the unashamed faith that is willing uh, to press through what people would think, that is willing to make themselves look silly just to get to God, look silly before people, but really to get to God. Yeah. But you have persistent faith here. We're talking about an unstoppable force. Are you still with me today? It is essential to see what God is doing. There is another type of faith. This one is a bit different. This one is from Mark chapter 2. And I call this lend a hand faith. This is where these four men, there was a man, the Bible says, was paralytic. He's paralyzed from, you know, probably from neck all the way down. And he can't move. They hear that Jesus has come to town. As a matter of fact, Jesus came to someone else's house. These four men thought, you know what, we have a friend. This guy's been paralyzed all his life. He can't move. We need to do something. We can lend a hand, can't we? Amen. They carried him. They were going to come in the house. The place is packed out. And they thought, by all means, this guy needs to get to Jesus. If he just gets to Jesus, we know he'll be healed. Yeah. They believed so much, they went on top of the house and started ripping the roof off. I mean, can you imagine if I was your house? You'd be vexed. Yeah, man. You know, you'd be there vexed as Jesus is speaking. No. I mean, think about it. They didn't even care about the owner of a house. What they were concerned is, we need to get our friend. As they rip the roof, they can see Jesus in the center. They start letting the man down. Jesus saw them. And the scripture tells us in, in Luke chapter 2, verse, uh, you know, verse 4 and 5, it says, when they could not come near him because of the crowd. They uncovered the roof where he was. So when they were broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. In verse 5, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, son, your sins are forgiven you. Now, it's powerful. Jesus forgave his sins and also healed him. But Jesus saw their faith. The faith of the man that were brought down. There are people that are paralyzed by sin in this world. They're paralyzed by all sorts of things. And they would just need a friend that would be able to lend a hand, that would be able to have faith for them. And say, I know you are paralyzed. I know you are bound, but I'm here. I'm willing to just help you. Are you with me this morning? I'm willing to lend a hand to help you because I know you need it. Jesus saw their faith. See, God wants to see your faith. 
God wants to see your faith. And this is a powerful one because here, this is selfless. This is not, there's no self-interest in this. It's not a, a self-interest thing. This is not, okay, Lord, what can you do for me? This is, what can, can you do for someone else that I'm trying to help? This is why, as much as we think about ourselves, we also need to think about others. Yes. But apart from unashamed faith and persistent faith and lend a hand faith, there is also desperate faith, which can be combined with um, persistent faith or unashamed faith. Mark chapter 9, the Bible talks about this the woman with the issue of blood. Many of us know the story. There was a crowd in again kind of similar to the the blind man but she was consumed by the crowd jesus is kind of a bit far from her the crowd are there and you could just think about what this woman was going through she had been with this flow of blood an issue of blood which meant she was she lost a lot of blood she probably was skinny she's not married and people probably looked at her and didn't want to get close to her but she decided if I can just touch the helm of his garment, she got desperate. You know when you get desperate, you would the crowd will not stop you. You will press through the crowd as people hit you in your face. People hit you by the side. You're not concerned about that. You would just soak in the pain because you are desperate. You just want to get to Jesus. There are times in life where we have to be desperate, when we have to use desperate faith to try and pierce through the crowd, try and pierce through the obstacles and the things that seem to be so massive and huge to try and stop us from reaching and touching Jesus. And this woman was willing to go deeper. She was willing to press through the crowd. Being in a crowd is not a joke. Every year in India, they have a, I think, the, I can't remember what it's called, but they have something where they go, um, where they go and they, they, I can't remember if it's, I don't know if it's Ramadan or, or it's the, the, but they have this thing where they have to travel somewhere and thousands of them on the road, they're trying to stone the devil. Maybe some of you would have heard about it. They, they will go in and try, and thousands of them will go in. There. They're throwing stones. Uh, they take it from the story of Abraham when Abraham was trying to uh, get the vultures out from the sacrifice that he made uh, to God, and the vultures tried to come down. And they thought that was that they're going to stone the devil. You know, it's deception. But nevertheless, they're trying to stone the devil. But in the midst of them stoning the devil, there's a stampede, and actually a lot of people die every year. They're trying to put it under control. Hundreds of people die. I've been in a crowd before. I remember years back, I went to a, a football match. It wasn't here, it was in um, Africa, Nigeria in particular. My parents were Nigeria. And so I lived in Nigeria for, for some time. And I remember one football match I went to, and it was a kind of big football match. Thousands of people were there. And a fight broke out. And it was one of those ones. A fight breaks out, everyone starts running. The gate is not that wide, and thousands are going through the gate. And I remember, I'm in the midst of a crowd, I'm young, and man, I felt I had to get up quickly because if you stay down, you're finished. Yeah. Everyone will just walk all over you and you will just, you'll be flat as the ground. That's how bad it is. I just got to get up and you have to wrestle through the crowd and it's so hard to try and stay on your feet uh, if you're small and everyone's big. And, 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 and I understood what it was when she had to press through the crowd. She had to. Because when you read the story, Jesus actually said, someone touched me. Yeah. And the disciples were like, huh? Everyone was touching you. Which meant everyone was pushing yeah. to touch Jesus. Not pushing. But her, her touching was different. Come on, come on, come on. You know some people, oh, there's a celebrity. Let me just touch him. Ah, touch him. <laughs> I touched Jesus. Yeah. You know. Oh, let me just ah, and then touch. But she was like, I need to get healed. I'm gonna press through because I just want to. It's a desperate faith. Yes. 
she had faith uh, that I just need to press through. I don't care. People might say, hey, skinny woman, get to the side. Uh, oh, look at her. Uh, and, but she pressed through the crowd amen. and she got healed. Because yes, yes, all she just wanted to do is touch the hem of his garment. Desperate faith. Are you still with me? Amen. Desperate faith. Unashamed faith. Persistent faith. Lend me a hand faith. Or lend a hand faith. And we have desperate faith. Well, there's one more. This one is a story in Matthew chapter 8. And many of you would know the story when a Bible calls a, a centurion that came to Jesus. Now, he had a servant. Now, uh, uh, for someone to really care for a servant that is willing to go on a journey to go see Jesus, it's quite powerful. So this centurion came to Jesus and said, hey, by the way, my servant is not well. He needs to be healed. Jesus said, oh, okay, not a problem. I will go. The man's like, uh-uh. <laughs> Lord, you know, uh, you don't have to come with me. Just speak the word. Because I'm a person in command. Let me read it to you rather than paraphrasing it. It says the man said, For the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. For only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having so, uh, soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and says to, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does that. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to those who followed him, surely I say to you, I have not uh, found such great faith, not even in Israel. I have not found such great faith. And the next statement of Jesus is quite powerful. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit with Abraham Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. They will be waiting the national teeth. That should scare us. That's Matthew chapter 8. You read from verse 5 to 12. You find that should scare us. And let me just explain what Jesus really was trying to say here. Jesus was shocked with this man's faith. You know what I call this faith? Commando faith. <laughs> yeah, commando. This is a, a commando is a person that knows, that knows ranks, that uh, is in a, a, an army or military that understands ranking and understands authority. They dish out authority, they receive authority. This is commando faith. He said, Jesus, all you just have to do, just give a command. Speak a word. Healed. And the servant will be healed. Yeah. This is serious. Jesus said great faith. I have never seen this kind of faith in Israel. And then Jesus goes further to try and slap the people of God in the face. He says there are many that will come from the east and the west. These are, are people that are not uh, the pagans that will come from far yonder and they will come into the kingdom of God. Oh. But the sons of the kingdom, those that the kingdom are meant for, they will be thrown into outer darkness, meaning the sons of the kingdom take the things of God for granted that they end up, stop believing. But those that are out there, they, they have so much faith, they will just believe and say, speak the word. That means we have to be careful. That Jesus was willing, willing to say, this man's faith was even greater than even his disciples. Commando faith. This is the kind of faith that you want to have. Just speak the word. Okay. Now, as we stay on this one, that's the last one, or probably others, but this is the last one. As we stay on this one, I want us to go back to our text for a minute. Hebrews 11, go back to our text, and you will see that in our text, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Amen. Amen. For he who comes to God must believe 
that he is he is and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him but then when you look at hebrews uh, chapter uh, uh, you know chapter 11 verse 3 in our text when you look at it you will see what it says uh, very quickly it says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by what by the word of God. So the things that are seen, what we see right now, the things that are seen, the world, the, 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 you know, the universe, that, and uh, where we live, the things we see are not made of things which are visible. Okay, let's try and break that down. This carpet was made from things that we already see. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. The chairs you're sitting on, the wooden part of it, not the metal, the wooden part of it are made from trees that you, you see. A lot of things that we function with, things that we use were made from things. They don't just, they weren't just invisible and we just, I can just go shaped. You know, it would be great, isn't it? Just, I don't like to poop here, I want something else. And it just appears. You know, you don't like your clothes. No, I want this. I want. No, no, no. But God can do that. Amen. So the things that we see are not made from things that are visible. Which means, watch this. In the beginning, what did God say? Let there be light. And the light appeared. God spoke the word. Command of faith. Let there be light. And there was light. That's great faith. Yeah. The beginning was created by the word of God. John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So when God spoke, God spoke that which is of him into existence. He spoke things. He didn't have to. I, I, I know we know that God created the heavens and the earth. But it was creation by speaking. He spoke things into existence. You know how long it takes for us to struggle to make things? We, you know, you, you see softwares that are made, they take hours making this uh, particular software. And when they make the software, it's not even great at first, everyone rushes for it. And then they have to have patches upon patches, updates upon updates to help us. And it gets to a point, oh, we need to we need up, upgrade. Hello? Yeah. They make a brand new car. They take months to make the car in the factory. They do this, do that. And then you drive the car after a while, you start realizing, okay, there's problem here, problem there, problem. Then they give you benefit, benefit. Afterwards, we need to make a new one. God just spoke. Yeah. Better be like, boom, light just appeared. And scientists have spent years studying light, <laughs> studying it, traveling to the moon, trying to go to the to to Mars. Uh, do this, spend billions and billions on something God just said. Let me be. Are you with me today? Amen, amen. What I'm trying to show us today is how faith is actually an unstoppable force. It's an unstoppable force. Whether we use a persistent faith, whether we are an unashamed one, whether we lend a hand faith, or perhaps, you know, we you know, desperate faith. And the last one, the commando. Faith is unstoppable. And this is why, can I tell you today that even unbelievers use faith without even realizing they're using it. You know when people, you know, they send people on these courses, or people go on courses where they, I want to be a millionaire. And so they go on these courses and I've seen some of them and they would tell them to recite things. Oh, wake up in the morning and say, I am going to be a millionaire. I'm rich. I am going to be the new Warren Buffett. And I'm going to be uh, the Bill Gates of my generation. And they start speaking. They look in the mirror and start speaking to themselves. What are they trying to do? They're trying to convince themselves. There is that aspect of trying to speak. Words are so powerful. Words are so powerful. We all know it. The Hebrew, uh, the Proverbs tells us, death and life and the power of a tongue. And those that love it eats the fruit of, their, of it also. So therefore, if you speak negative, the fruit of that will come. If you speak positive, 
the fruit of that will come. So therefore, as we enter 2020, let us speak positive things. Amen. Let's speak faith into our lives. Amen. Faith into our situations. Are you with me today? Amen. Favor, Amen. where it seems difficulty, where it seems obstacle, speak faith. Amen. Speak faith because you are, you know, and as I said, sinners use this. They convince themselves that they are going to be something. Amen. And this leads me, as I'm drawing this to a close, it leads me to something else. We understand that faith without works is what? Dead. Dead. So as I convince myself, see, this doesn't come, the God factor is so di different. God just speaks and the works kick into action. This is where we are different from God. Let me just say that again. When God spoke, whatever he spoke, let it be light, the light was shaped and came into existence. We are different because we human beings, when we speak, we speak faith and believe. We did not have to put words into what we've said to make the faith life. Did you actually just get that? Let me repeat that again. When God speaks, because God is God, God is different from man. God is supernatural. We cannot do what God does even though we are living and we're becoming more and more like Jesus. When Jesus was crucified and he resurrected, he appeared before his disciples. He just appeared one time. I think another time he actually walked through the wall and appeared to them. We can't do that. Uh, we, we just can't do that. No, we're not Jesus. And at one point, he actually made himself a certain way where he was able to eat with them. And then in John 21, when Peter and the disciples went back fishing and were fishing, Jesus came again in the midst of them. They didn't even realize who he was until, oh. And so Jesus can do stuff that we can't do. Even though we are trying to be more and more like Jesus, there is a serious gap between us and God. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are far higher than our ways. Are you with me today? I'm trying to get us to understand when God spoke, Things, works, whatever was going to take shape, started taking shape. Because God doesn't have to get on earth and, oh, how long, Lord, did you build the earth? Well, I took thousands of years because really uh, it takes a lot of work to build, to try and make sand, to try and make the, uh, the, 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 the planet. And then guess what? There are just many, many planets out there and it took me some time to physically make them. God didn't have to. God just spoke it and it came to existence. The difference is, we speak, we have faith. You see, when we don't have faith and we lack faith, we kill everything off to do with creation and creativity. But when we have faith, we speak and things happen. Let me give you another one. Man and woman, for everyone to be born, there has to be a coming together of a man and woman. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Oh, you can believe, but you've got to come together. <laughs> That's just the, the reality. But when the angel spoke to Mary and says, hey, you know, how is this going to be? And I'm going to be with a man. The Holy Ghost will fill you. That's what you have. The Holy Ghost just fill you. Job done. There didn't have to be any physical act. The Holy Ghost will just fill you. Doesn't the Holy Ghost fill us? Amen. And there were many things that happens inside of us when God fills us. So what I'm trying to say is, Church, we need to have faith and exercise faith as we go into the new year. Understand the power that we have in us. We have so much power in us, sometimes we don't even use them. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. There are things you hope for that are godly, they're righteous. But don't let the enemy put obstacles in your way. Make you think you can't do it. You start convincing yourself you can't do it. Your faith is your substance. Your faith is your evidence. And faith without works is dead. When you have faith, start putting it to work. If you say, I want my family to be saved. They shall be saved in Jesus' name. You spoke it, that's great. But that's words. You need a second element. It's only God I can say you can be saved and they'll be saved straight away. Amen? 
But we have to take the second part to make the faith active. You go and go and witness to them. Or God has to send someone to go and witness to them. That's the works. Are you with me today? Well, next year, I want to achieve this. That's good. Speak it. Great. Confess it. But you have to take action. Well, I want Jesus to heal me. Are you willing to be desperate? Yeah. Oh yeah, I believe, but you got to press through the crowd. Yeah. Even though the man was paralyzed, he still needed someone to carry him all the way. Works. Let's believe today. Let's have faith. We can accomplish great things. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I want to encourage you today. Start coming against that doubt, that unbelief. Start, even, even if you have to repent, God, forgive me for my pessimism, for my unbelief, my doubting, doubting you, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Yes. Yes. Jesus had to rebuke his, his disciples in Mark 16 for their unbelief and their doubt. He rebuked them. And so as we go from here today, let us have faith. There are things that you want God to do in your life. Uh, you want God to raise you up uh, as a powerful man of God. Yes, you have faith. You believe that. But you, there's some works. There's some things you need to do. There are others that you want to be a, a great wife uh, that you can be. You have faith. You speak it. But you have to put some things into action. Are you with me today? There are others where well, I want to start a business. It's good to have that, to confess it, to believe it. You have to put some things to work. You have to believe. Well, I want to be righteous. Well, it's good to speak it. We speak it. That's the first point. Now you have to take steps to be righteous and make sure you do some things and do and some things you don't have to do. That's the God that we serve. God has given us everything that we need. The Bible says that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. Let's believe God today. We have faith. It's an unstoppable force. And we can accomplish great things in God. Can someone say amen? amen. Let's bow our heads and close and pray. As our heads are bowed and eyes closed, God will speak to us today. The world that we know it now, everything in it was shaped and framed because God spoke those things into existence. What is going on in your life? What is going on in your life and your circumstance? That God will speak to you. Maybe you're here today. You came to the service. And you know you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Perhaps someone invited you to the service. And you know you need Christ to come into your life. You need Jesus to wash your sins clean. You know God is here. His love, his mercy. And you want to start the new year with Jesus. You are in the right place. God loves you. God cares for you. Jesus Christ gave himself on the cross. He walked the earth as man. He went through what man went through. And he gave himself on the cross. Allowed man to crucify him. He did that for you and I. And God's speaking to you today. You need Christ. You need Jesus to wash your sins clean. You need him to be your Lord and Savior. If that's you today, say, I need Jesus. I need Christ to come to my life. I want you to raise your hand today, very quickly. It's not an embarrassing time, but it's a time that God is willing to accept you and welcome you into his kingdom. Say, you know what, that's me. You might be religious, you've been to church maybe a few times, but going to church or being in a church does not make you a Christian. Born in a Christian family is not enough for heaven. Jesus gave himself on a cross to wash your sins clean. 
It's our sin that separates us from God. And Christ came to bridge that gap. And you're here today. You say, I need Jesus. I need Christ to come into my life. I want to be honest before God. I need Jesus to wash my sins clean. I want you very quickly to you to raise your hands. And ask me. I need Christ. I need Christ. I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you're back today and you want to come back to Christ. Say, so I want to come back to Christ. I'm back sitting today. Raise your hand. Say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. I see that hand. Pray for me. I want to come back to Christ. Hallelujah. As we're going to pray today, God's speaking to us as a, as a church. Faith is essential in everything that we do. I think we all know that. Whether it's desperation, don't let the crowd get to you. The crowd is always around us. Everywhere we go, there's always a crowd. Whether we're outside, there's a crowd. Sometimes even when we're inside, there's a, a big family that seems to be a crowd. And some people get hindered. <laughs> the church itself can be a crowd. Not that a crowd is unrighteous, but just the mere fact that there are people. Some people don't even want to, oh, no, I don't want to show my desperation. No, I don't want to do this because I feel like people will look at me. And we're too concerned about what people think. <laughs> when we can get our healing and our miracle, our deliverance, we're, too, we're far more concerned about what the next person is thinking about us. God is speaking to you today. God is speaking to us. With our heads about and eyes closed today, God's challenging you about faith. Whether it's desperation, whether it's you lending a hand to someone, whether it's you being persistent or unashamed, or as I said, command of faith. Say, I'm going to believe God. As I go into the new year, I'm going to believe God for great things to happen. I'm going to believe Him. I'm going to believe Him. I'm going to believe God. I want us to stand today and let's come and pray. Let's lay hold of God. Hallelujah.